name is Ronnie Decker. I'm a registered nurse, and this is Nursing Analysis. In today's lesson, we will be discussing EKG abnormalities. Let's review a normal EKG rhythm before we begin discussing abnormal rhythms. Please refer to my previous video on basic EKG interpretation for a full explanation. We shall now begin and we start with the P wave which tells us that the atria are depolarized. The inside of the cell becomes more positive and action potential takes place which is atrial contraction where the upper chambers force blood into the lower ventricles. The, the isoelectric line returns briefly and the ventricles become depolarized creating their own action potential which allows them to contract and blood is forced out to the lungs and the body. The QRS complex forms the waves representing this state. The last wave which is the T wave indicates depolarization or relaxation of the ventricles. Remember, the atria are repolarized at the same time the ventricles are depolarized and the larger QRS complex hides the atria's resting wave presence. So now that we have reviewed basic concepts we can now go into abnormal waveforms and their corresponding meanings. Now look closely at this rhythm. The ST segment is usually observed with a smooth transition from the isoelectric line into the rise of the T wave. This rhythm shows the S wave elevating above the isoelectric line and there is no uniform T wave. They are merged together above the isoelectric line which is known as ST segment elevation. The ST elevation is commonly known as a STEMI which means ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. Our second analysis of an abnormal EKG rhythm shows another problem with the ST segment. This rhythm shows an inverted T wave which usually means poor perfusion of blood and oxygen which can lead to myocardial ischemia. The next abnormal EKG rhythm shows a prolonged PR interval. The normal PR interval time is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. There are different problems that can occur with prolongation of the PR interval so it is important to note if the prolongation is consistent and this seems to be in the case in this rhythm. So for consistent prolongation of the PR interval we can label this rhythm as a first degree heart block which is a very common condition and is not considered life threatening. Everyday stress can produce this response. In our next rhythm we note the PR interval is prolonged again, except in this strip each PR interval becomes progressively longer and by the time we make it to the third P wave, notice there is no QRS complex following it. This is called a dropped QRS complex. It then continues back to another P wave. This rhythm is indicative of a second degree heart block. 
This is also known as Mobitz 1 or Winkieback. So remember, a prolonged progressive PR interval and a missing QRS complex equals second degree block. This can indicate damage in the internodal pathway. This type of block is considered partial and can progress to Mobitz type 2, which we will talk about next. Now look at this rhythm and notice the PR interval is normal, which differs from the other two rhythms. So in second degree heart block, Mobitz type 2, the PR interval is normal, but there is still a dropped QRS complex, which leaves us with a long isoelectric wave that indicates no positive activity taking place in the heart. Everything as far as activity stops at the ventricular level. The P wave activity continues, but the activity does not reach the ventricles, and this is second degree heart block Mobitz type 2. We will now learn about third degree heart block in our next rhythm strip. This heart block is considered to be a complete heart block. Here, the atria and ventricles begin beating at their own rates, meaning no atrial established impulses make it to the ventricles. So this means the upper chambers are beating at a much higher rate and the lower chambered ventricles cannot keep up. Next, we will, shall now discuss Wolf Parkinson's White Syndrome and this wave abnormality looks like this. It is a congenital condition that causes irregular impulse pathways known as the Bundle of Kent. These impulses have lost control and can move in either direction, firing upward or downward. This causes what is known as re-entry, which can lead to supraventricular tachycardia in which there are no discernible P waves. Now we will review this rhythm. As you can see, it shows sawtooth structures that are supposed to be P waves or normal P waves. Yet the multitude of these structures indicates the P wave impulse is not firing out like it is supposed to. It begins re-entry and cycles within itself, eventually reaching the proper pathway, which is indicated by the QRS complex. This is indicative of atrial flutter, which is not normally life-threatening. This can be caused by abnormal levels of thyroid hormones, valve prolapse, or MIs. It can progress into atrial fibrillation, which we will talk about next. As we can see in this rhythm, this is atrial fibrillation. There are no distinct P waves. The multitude of P waves barely rise from the isoelectric line and they differ in height and shape from those observed in atrial flutter, as their appearance would be deemed shorter than those in the sawtooth appearance of atrial flutter. AFib is notorious for causing thrombi, or clotting of the blood, as the consistent flow becomes interrupted by this abnormality in the atria. It is important to note that the R to R interval may be regular in atrial flutter, but during atrial fibrillation, the R to R interval will always be irregular. Our next abnormality 
is the premature ventricular contraction, which can be elicited by smoking or caffeine. The ventricles become stimulated without atrial involvement. They are stimulated by irregular and irritable foci. This next rhythm we are reviewing is known as torsades de pointis. This is a twisting across the isoelectric line which can lead to sudden cardiac death and is considered to be a medical emergency. This condition is caused by prolonged QT activity which is usually caused by a severe electrolyte imbalance. final rhythm we must discuss is known as ventricular fibrillation or V-fib. It occurs due to rapid erratic impulses in the heart which cause the ventricles to quiver and not pump effectively. This condition can be triggered by an MI because the heart doesn't pump adequately during ventricular fibrillation. Sustained ventricular fibrillation can cause low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, and can even lead to death. Well, as always, we cannot close this lesson without our fun review. So sit back, relax, and get ready. We started this lesson with rhythm inspection. No longer are we guessing as our knowledge is clear in EKG detection. Just look at each deflection. Now we are professing. ST segment elevation indicating myocardial infarct revelation. T wave inversion, indicating circulatory perversion, consistent PR prolongation, measures by the clock, indicates the condition of first degree heart block, progressive prolongation, takes a longer vacation at each PR station, and something is missing from its tracing. What can we expect? There is no QRS complex. So what can this rhythm be? It's a heart block of the second degree. But wait, this title is not done. For this rhythm is also known as Mobitz 1. The second degree block is noted twice, as Mobitz 2 is not as nice. It can be very easily misunderstood because the PR interval appears to be good. But please remember, for your test, it is still missing a QRS complex. There is one more block that we may see that can be recognized by the waves known as P. Their numbers are greater than the waves that come later. What should come next is the QRS complex. With further inspection, there is no connection. At this point, the heart is spent. As we mentioned, the congenital condition and the bundle of Kent. The impulse travels up and down and all around and not a P wave to be found. For the next rhythm, who do we call? Just remember the teeth of a saw. As the atria begin to stutter, we know this is atrial flutter. The next rhythm has a similar relation, but without P wave elevation, known as atrial fibrillation. As we check out this next sporadic reaction, we notice premature ventricular contraction. What is this twisting we now see? This is the condition of TDP. Now that we have faced life or death, there is one more serious rhythm left that may take your breath. 
Notice it's irregular tracing. Yes, this is ventricular fibrillation. As always, thank you for taking the time to learn with nursing analysis. Please continue to show your support by clicking the like and subscribe buttons, which enables the production of future educational content. Thank you. Are you looking to change your future? Why not consider a career in nursing? At Medical Prep Institute, we offer flexible and affordable classes to help you get started on your path. What are you waiting for? Contact us now.